saturated fats with polyunsaturated fats was associated with reduced heart disease and whenever you lower blood pressure you lower the incidence of heart disease and um, so healthy fats prioritize your protein Welcome to another episode of Reboot with Dr. Arasi Maran. I'm your host, Dr. Arasi Maran. I'm a board certified interventional cardiologist with over a decade of experience. I work at the Medical University of South Carolina. However, this initiative is completely separate from my teaching and faculty responsibilities at the university. The purpose of this project is to provide evidence-based scientific facts to anyone who wants to know. Knowledge is power, and my goal is to empower you. Today, I'm joined by my niece, Dr. Divya Marin, who will co-host the show with me. So, Divya, what are we talking about today? Well, today, I'm very interested in hearing your opinion and research on the pros and cons on different types of diet. How do you feel about that? Well, that's a great question. Let's start by, I'm not a nutritionist. I'm an interventional cardiologist, but because of the nature of my work, I had to learn about different types of diet. And also as a person who struggled with weight and fat diets, etc., I have done a lot of research and uh, therefore I'm actually quite comfortable talking about the different diets. Which one do you want to start with? Let's start with the low fat diet. What, is, what are its benefits, pros, cons? What do you sure. think? The low-fat diet became extremely popular in the 1980s and 1990s. It focuses on reducing overall fat intake, particularly saturated fats. The premise was that lowering fat consumption would lead to weight loss and improved heart health. A landmark study, the Women's Health Initiative Dietary Modification Trial, followed close to 49,000 women. For an average 8.1 years, the study found that low-fat dietary pattern resulted in a modest weight loss and some improvement in LDL cholesterol level. But it did not significantly reduce the risk of coronary heart disease, which is heart attacks, etc., or stroke or cardiovascular disease in the postmenopausal women. However, a more recent study uh, suggests that the type of fat matters more than the total amount. A meta-analysis published in Lancet found that replacing saturated fats with polyunsaturated fats was associated with reduced heart disease. So, potential benefits, uh, modest weight loss, potential improvement in LDL, uh, cholesterol levels, often leads to the increased consumption of vegetables, fruits, whole grains, etc. The drawbacks can be uh, the essential fatty acids may not be fully balanced. You may overconsume carbohydrates because you're not eating fats and doesn't, doesn't distinguish between healthy fats and unhealthy fats. There you go. Okay. Now, like you said, carbs. How about a low carb diet? And how does that differ from a low fat diet? Perfect. So low carb diet, you know, famously known as the Atkins diet, the ketogenic diet, etc., focuses on reducing carbohydrate uh, intake while increasing protein and fat consumption. This theory is that the carb level, uh, having less carbs decreases the insulin levels and improves the insulin sensitivity and your body starts using fats for energy and thereby leading to weight loss. A systematic review and meta-analysis published by the British Journal of Nutrition in 2013 found that individuals assigned to the low-carb diet or ketogenic diet achieved a greater long-term reduction in body weight and diastolic blood pressure compared to those with a low-fat diet. Another study published in the Annals of Internal Medicine compared to compared low-carb and the low-fat diet and they did it for a period of 12 months. The low-carb group lost more weight and had greater improvements in HDL cholesterol and triglyceride level. So, pros, effective for short-term weight loss, may improve insulin sensitivity, can lead to reduced triglycerides and increased HDL, which is the good cholesterol. The cons can be challenging to maintain. There is chocolate and candy and cookies and cake everywhere. May lead to nutritional deficiencies. And you have to 
be careful about the LDL cholesterol levels. So when you're eating the fats, you have to be very careful that you are eating healthy fats and not the unhealthy fats. Mm. So and some metabolic markers like insulin sensitivity definitely improved. P uh, people reduced their diabetic medications, etc. However, the long-term sustainability of this diet has been debated. That's interesting. I've always wondered about paleo diet, its origin and its impact on health. Can you share your two cents? Yes, yes, yes. The paleo diet or which is short for the paleolithic diet aims to mimic the eating patterns of our hunter-gatherer ancestors. Okay, it focuses on whole foods like lean meats, fish, fruits, vegetables, nuts and seeds but excludes grains because grain is a product of industrialized agricultural uh, uh, agriculture, legumes, dairy, and processed food. A systematic review and a meta-analysis which was published in the American Journal of Clinical Nutrition in 2015 found that the paleo diet resulted in a greater short-term improvements in metabolic syndrome components than the controlled diet itself. Another study which was published in the European Journal of Clinical Nutrition found that a paleo diet improved glucose tolerance much more than the Mediterranean style diet and especially in individuals with the uh, heart disease uh, conditions, coronary artery disease. So advantages encourages whole food consumption may lead to improved blood sugar, often results in increased protein and increased fiber intake which is good. But the disadvantages, it's a very restrictive diet and therefore can be difficult to do it as a long term. May lead to calcium and vitamin D deficiencies because you're excluding dairy products, etc. It can be expensive, it can be time consuming. But while these, all of this, you know, these studies are promising, but the long term data on this uh, diet is extremely lacking. And the historical accuracy of the diet is still debated between the anthropologist and the nutritionist. That was really good evidence-based discussion too. <laughs> uh, I always wanted, I've also wondered about the keto diet and how it differs from the paleo diet and which is more sustainable. Are any of them sustainable really? Mm, very, very good test, uh, uh, questions. Keto diet, short for ketogenic diet, is a high-fat very low carb diet that a, uh, wants puts your body in a state of ketosis ketosis is basically ketone bodies which are formed in your produced in your body when your body starts using fat as an energy store um, instead of carbohydrates carbohydrates use glucose for energy whereas a ketogenic diet uses ketones for energy Okay, a meta-analysis published in the British Journal of Nutrition in 2013 found that individuals assigned to a very low carbohydrate or a keto diet achieved greater long-term reductions in body weight compared to those assigned to the low-fat diet. Okay, for epilepsy patients with seizures, systematic review in the Cochrane database of um, reviews found that the ketogenic diets resulted in a um, short to medium term benefits and seizure controls in children with drug resistant epilepsy. So a lot of neurologists prescribe the ketogenic diets for their patients with epilepsy. Now let's focus on type 2 diabetes in the low carb uh, ketogenic population. Uh, the diabetic a study in the diabetic therapy population showed that a ketogenic diet improved the glycemic control and resulted in reduction elimination in medication and all and in also reduce their weight especially in the type 2 obese population the pros are it's effective for rapid weight loss okay it improves epilepsy control in some of the drug resistant epilepsy patients potential benefits in type 2 diabetes and weight management cons again extremely restrictive and therefore may be difficult to maintain long term again may lead to nutritional deficiency if your meals are not well planned and the potential side effect is keto flu so let's briefly talk about what is keto flu okay normally we use glucose as our source of energy 
right? That's why before going for a run or something, we have a big eat a banana, which is high in carbohydrates, which ultimately breaks down to glucose. But when you shift your metabolism from using glucose to ketones, that shift kind of affects your body and you feel tired and fatigued and etc. But you will overcome it. So you can also get constipated. And when you are using ketones, you can get a little bit of ketone breath, etc. So you have to keep that in mind. But the research for epilepsy, weight loss, neuroprotective effects, the long term efficacy of this diet itself is continuously being studied. And some it may not be suitable for everyone. Some people just cannot manage it. Well, I found that very interesting, especially the part about neurologists using keto diets. That, that's really interesting. Uh, how about one I've never heard about before now? <laughs> the carnivore diet. Okay. What is that? <laughs> okay, it's just another extreme form of low carb diet. Okay, they just eat animal products. So all kinds of meat, fish, eggs, dairy, because dairy comes from animal. It includes, excludes, sorry, excludes all plant foods. The scientific research on the carnivore diet is extremely limited. Okay, it's an elimination diet. Most of the claims of, of benefits are anecdotal and not supported by peer-reviewed study. A case report published in the current developments in nutrition described a patient who experienced remission of Crohn's disease uh, symptoms from uh, being on a carnivore diet. However, this is a single case, cannot be generalized. But in the social media world, there are a lot of people who have come on social media and who have you know, millions of followers who have um, claimed the benefits of the carnivore diet. In my opinion, I think the carnivore diet works for some people because of rapid weight loss and because you're eating just purest form of protein helps in gut disease, uh, gut health and autoimmune disease, okay? It's a very, it's, you're eliminating a lot of food. So your diet is actually very simple. You're eating the same meat products every day. And uh, if you can sustain it, then, you know, what works for you works for you. But, uh, you know, the law, it, it is not a diet. I think in a population basis, a whole lot of us can follow for several years and live like that. So it's very highly restrictive. I think we need, we need to do more studies to learn about the diet. Well, let's talk about heart healthy diets. With your favorite. Yes, and yes, yes. <laughs> the Mediterranean yes. diet and the DASH diet. And what's your take on that? Okay, fine. Both Mediterranean diet and the DASH diet, which is basically DASH stands for Dietary Approaches to Stop Hypertension. They are very well studied. There are a lot of peer-reviewed uh, uh, articles published and many health professionals recommend that. So Mediterranean diet is basically the type of diet uh, consumed by people in the Mediterranean region where they consumed a lot of oil of oil, a lot of poultry, a lot of fish, um, you know, it's and lots of nuts, uh, which are very good and high, healthy, um, good fats, etc. A meta-analysis published in BMJ, British Medical Journal in 2008, found a greater adherence to a Mediterranean diet and therefore was associated with a higher improvement in health status, significant reduction in weight, uh, improvement in mortality, decrease in the incidence of cancer, uh, decrease in the incidence of Parkinson's disease and even Alzheimer's disease. So that's what the Mediterranean diet and I mean, Almost every doctor would recommend the Mediterranean diet because that has the biggest body of evidence. So moving on to the DASH diet, which is mostly for patients with high blood pressure. This was published in the Journal of New England Journal of Medicine. It showed that anyone with the DASH diet significantly lowered the blood pressure. And whenever you lower blood pressure, you lower the incidence of heart disease and um, uh, strokes, etc. A more recent meta-analysis published in Advances in Nutrition in 2020 found that the adherence of DASH diet was associated with a lower incidence of all-cause mortality of cardiovascular, coronary, stroke, and diabetes. So both diets are very sustainable. They have strong scientific evidence and uh, overall they promote 
of excellent well-being in the cardiac space, in the brain space, and also in the weight loss space. Now, it basically, as I said, healthy oils, healthy nuts, uh, vegetables, and uh, poultry. So that's what the DASH diet uh, and the Mediterranean diet is on. So we've spoken about so many different types of diets today. Mm -hmm. Do you have any diet that, I mean, anything that you think is the right diet? What, do, what would you recommend? Well, what is the right diet? The right diet is the right diet which works for you. It may not be the right diet which works for me, but it may be the right diet which works for you. So it's very, very personal question. It is almost like asking, uh, do you like uh, vanilla ice cream or chocolate ice cream? It's, it's a very individual thing. So whatever diet you can maintain on a long term basis is the best one for you. There are for me personally, because I have a strong family history of diabetes. Uh, so I'm very carb conscious. And I also have a chocolate addiction, so I want to keep be extremely carb conscious. But I, if you kind of look at overall, you want to have healthy fats, okay? You want to have good amount of pro protein, prioritize protein. And as I said, there is, you know, you have essential fatty acids, which your body needs. You have essential amino acids, which your body needs, but there's no essential carbohydrates, right? So I think kind of getting your na carbohydrates from natural sources, such as vegetables and fruits and not from processed foods is probably the best way to go. So healthy fats, prioritize your protein and just get your carbs from natural sources and not from ultra processed for sources would be my final takeaway from this. Excellent advice, Asyata. Thank you for sharing your knowledge and the current evidence-based discussion about all these diets. That concludes our evidence-based episode of Reboot with Dr. Arsi Maran. Until next time, stay healthy, stay informed, it's never too late to reboot your life. Thank you so much for listening. If you found us valuable, you can subscribe to the show on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or any of your favorite podcast app. And also, please consider leaving us a rating or a review as that helps others find the podcast too. I hope you have a great week ahead.